So continuing from part 1, let's look at some econometric interpretations. Equations 5 and 6 describe the arch class of models. Remember I told you to write down the econometric model so that you can follow my explanations. This is an H1 model because HT has been modeled to be a time varying variance. It is a function of a constant term and a squared error of the previous term, which is one lagged period. So that is the H1 model. The H1 model states that when a big shock happens in the previous period, it is more likely that the value of UT in absolute terms because of the square will be bigger. That is, when U squared, t minus 1 is large or small, the variance of the next innovation in period t is also large or small. I mentioned in the previous video that the coefficients of beta naught and beta 1 must be positive in order to ensure a positive variance. For the stability condition to hold, beta 1 must be less than 1, otherwise Hg will be explosive, that is, it will continue to rise over time. Beta 1 must also be positive. The squared errors contain positive serial correlation even though the error by themselves do not. If beta 1 equals 0, it implies that the series does not exhibit time varying volatility while beta 1 less than 1 evidences time varying variance. Remember beta 1 must not be greater than 1 so it should lie between 0 0.1 to 0 0.9. Conditional normality implies that the distribution is a function of a known information at time t minus 1 such that in period 2 the error term is conditional on information obtained in period 1 that is year 1. It is normally distributed with a mean of 0 and a variance constructed as this beta naught plus beta 1 and the squared error of the 1 lagged period. Now some terminologies. What do you understand by volatility? Simply means that when the values of financial variables change rapidly from time to time in an apparently unpredictable manner. So this is one of the reasons why you must use a high frequency data. So you can see here the movements of two stock returns. Highly unpredictable. This is a daily series for both stocks. Highly unpredictable to any investor. So this is a volatile series. Stock 1 and stock 2. So having understood volatility, what is volatility clustering? Periods when large changes are followed by further large changes and periods when small changes are followed by further small changes. Its evidence is wild and calm periods. So using the returns on the FTSE series, you can see evidence of volatility clustering here. Large changes followed by further large changes. Then you can see some calmness here. Small changes followed by further small changes. At this point, you can see a clustering here. Large changes followed by further large changes. So these returns on the FTSE evidences volatility clustering over the time being examined. And looking at the distribution, we can see that it is leptocortic from here. This is an e-views output. The tails on the right are fat and looking at the kurtosis is 4.9 and skewness is 0.03. The Jacobera p-value shows that this is a non-normal distribution. It is not normally distributed. So this explains volatility clustering where you have large changes followed by further large changes and small changes followed by further small changes. The arch estimator. The presence of arch does not affect the consistency of OLS. OLS still has has desirable properties on the arch model. OLS yields consistent but inefficient estimates. If you use OLS to estimate an arch model, the estimates of the covariance matrix will be biased. It will yield invalid T statistics. Remember that these are valid for any form of heteroscedasticity. An arch is just one particular form of heteroscedasticity. Therefore, the most ideal and efficient estimator for you to use will be the maximum likelihood algorithm or maximum likelihood estimate. So let's summarize some lessons learned in this tutorial. The time varying variance is modeled by the procedure called autoregressive conditional heteroscedasticity. Arch model simply conveys that the series in question has a time varying variance, that is it is heteroscedastic, it depends that is conditional on lagged effects, that is autocorrelation. The arch model is intuitively appealing because it explains volatility as a function of the errors. 
These errors are called shocks or news by financial analysts. They represent the unexpected, that is the unpredictable. Remember, the larger the shocks, the greater the volatility in the series. And since variance is often used to measure volatility, and volatility is a key element in asset pricing theories, arch models have become important in empirical finance. Most financial time series like stock prices, exchange rates, oil prices and so on exhibit random works in their level form that is they are non-stationary they exhibit time varying means but this series can become stationary at first difference and they often exhibit wide swings or volatility the wide swings suggest that the variance of this financial series changes over time telling us about time varying volatility volatility clustering as a recap shows that big changes in ut are fed into further big changes in ht via the lag effects of ut minus one lastly arch modeling has become increasingly popular useful for modeling volatility especially changes in volatility over time once again emphasizing time varying volatility for further reading and references you can look up these textbooks and journal articles and several journal articles out there video tutorials are not sufficient and they cannot replace reading so please support this video lecture with readings from these textbooks and also published papers I have covered the basics of arch modeling parts 1 and 2. Next, we will look at how to simulate an arch model using the eViews application. Then we will look at testing for arch effects, estimating arch models, and forecasting arch volatility. So stay with me, don't go away. The next video will be how to simulate arch models in eViews. Thank you for watching. I have covered the basics of arch modeling in parts 1 and 2. Support my channel. Please share my links with your cohorts, your students, your friends, and academic community subscribe to my channel if you have not done so i am dedicated to teaching beginners and intermediate level users don't go away i'll be right back